The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Welcome Termina. to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Termina, blogger around the OAA, host of Last Me Brain Cells and the host of Between Terminas and Oriented Neighborhood Television. Like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and also those watching on YouTube and also those watching on Ori Neighbor Television as well. Um, happy New Year to everybody here. Um, we got a lot to talk about. We got the holiday classics recapped, um, basketball thoughts heading into the new year. Um, and I know there's been a big story around out of the league, you know, that could have OA implications surrounding Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um, we're going to break all that down on this week's episode um let's look at uh let's look at the um story over at um we're gonna look at the um recap of the holiday tournaments obviously um that's occurred during the christmas holidays the new year's holidays um i think when you look at recapping all of them of course you know people are gonna say well um you know i mean like looking at the teams and you know you kind of start getting an idea where everybody's at um Heading into the um, heading into the year, and I think that's the big question. Um, I think a team that really, I thought, really showed a lot of growth during the um, holiday tournament, even though they lost, was Oak Park. I mean, you know, when you look at what Oak Park's done, I mean, they've only played four games. Um, I think clearly, a team that's really shown that's going in the right direction is the Knights considering that, you know, you look at obviously the sophomore class they have is very good. Um, Gino Hutchins, and Juan Holloway, um, Robert Smith. Um, Coach Durant Shepard's done a really nice job with that team. I mean, he's really done a nice job with that um, with that team. Yes, they lost by two to Macomb, Dakota. They had a chance to win that game. Um, I really think that they benefited from playing in that game. I mean, like Macomb, Dakota will test them for sure. Once again, the red. Um, when you get in the red, obviously you got North Farmington there. You got um, you got, I mean, you got um, Clarkston. You got Adams. You got um, you know, obviously the teams in the red. I mean, like that's not easy road for Oak Park, and I think that's I think re- have for them playing that game really is going to help them going forward. There, um, another team I thought that benefited from playing in the Holiday Classics was um. Ferndale University. I mean, when you really look at what the Eagles did, and that was a good Sanford Meridian team they beat. Um, Got to like what Coach Josh Nix has done. Obviously, the experience that the Eagles have. Um, I really think the win against Sanford Meridian, that's a good team that they beat. And that was a heck of a team they beat at St. Clark Community College. Um, 41-31 was the score um, of that game. Um, I really like the direction that they're going. Um, they if they can put three programs instead of two together, I think that'd be a good thing for coach Josh Nix. Um, if Ferndale university, you know, and I've said this many times in the thoughts columns that I wrote, um, that if Ferndale university was to get the numbers, actually get the numbers back up, you know what I mean? You know, where they can have three programs. I will tell you what program strength will be much better on there. I mean, with the way that that team's been playing, um, there's nowhere to go but up for them. I mean, obviously, with the way that they played, um, I really think that, you know, with Ferndale University, with their, with where they're at right now, the way they started before the season started, um, I just think that they're a team that is just right now getting ready to break out. Um, could they be a factor in the gold? I think they could be. I mean, you know, obviously, Southview has not looked very good. Harper Woods, you know, I mean, Harper Woods, I mean, like, they had, yes, they had a tough loss to water for Mott, um, but I think Harper Woods right now is the best team in that division. Um, Avondale is another team to really watch for as well. I mean, like, yes, they had that bad loss early in the year to, uh, they had the bad loss to South Lion East in the um, North Bill Showcase. Um, but when you really look at teams that I think that could be on the rise that really benefited from playing in the holiday tournament, um, I really think that um, Fernando University was one of those teams that really benefited from playing in that type of tournament. Um, other games, you know what I mean, that I thought, you know what I mean, like was had a decent run. Um, 
You know, Troy, of course, they benefited from playing as well. I mean, yes, they they trailed early against um against Belleville, um, down by fifteen at one point and came back and um took the lead at one point and then they ended up losing sixty eight sixty one to a very good Belleville team. Um I thought that, you know, Mason Parker, I know what he's been more than capable of doing. I've seen Mason since youth. I mean, like, you know, um, and I knew he was bound for greatness. And he's been really been playing very good basketball for Troy. Um, and then you put together, obviously, um, Carter Cusmano. You put Zach Pinoza. You have Darius Whiteside, Chase Kniper. Um their bench has always been solid for Coach Gary Frelick. Um, you have John Whiteside come off the bench. I mean, like, you look at what Troy's got. I mean, like, Troy, I mean, this is a team that I think could put fear in the eyes of the White. I mean, there was one point that the entire division was 23-6 and six prior to Christmas. Um, you know, Groves has been playing very good basketball. But, you know, but with Troy, you know, people are going to say, well, what about Bloomfield Hills? I mean, like, obviously, Bloomby Hills, you know, they've been looking very good lately. They got an impactful freshman in, um, in, they got, in um, Drew Wilson. I mean, like, I mean, you got Noah Adams just there. But when I look at the team perspective, I, I really, really trust Troy with the way that they're playing right now. And I think, you know, when you look at the white right now, studying each team in that division, um, Farmington's a really hard team to figure out because of the, um, because of the flu outbreak and they didn't look good against River Rouge. Um, I mean, like they were blown out by 44. I mean, 68, 26. I mean, that's, that is pretty rough. Um, really is. Um, and then you look at, and then of course you look at like, or they haven't played in the break after the break. Um, Groves, we, they had that nice win after, after, um, I guess Wall Lake Central after two really tough losses. Um, both Josh's, Josh Simpson and Josh Gibson have been playing really good basketball. Coach Mark West. Um, Gross has been rolling. I mean, <laughs> they've been rolling um, with the way that they're playing. Um, I really like the direction of that, of the Falcons where they're at right now. I really think that, you know, Groves has nowhere to go but up. Um, clearly, when you look at Groves, I mean, this is a team that, you know, they could be a, you know, they could be a, a team that, you know, they could scare some people. I think come postseason time, yes, they're in a very tough district. You know, obviously you have Orchard Lake, St. Mary's in there, Birmingham, Brother Rice, Bloomfield Hills, um, and Birmingham Seaholm in there. But I, I think Groves could be a player in that district. I, I, I really do with the way that they're playing right now. Um, I also think it could be a player in this division. I mean, the way they're playing right now. Um, West Bloomfield has been playing really good basketball as well. I like what Coach Anna Jordan's done playing team ball. Um, I mean, like they, I mean, like, yes, they had that loss to Gross Point South, but you know, I'm going to give them a pass here for that. Um, I mean, they didn't play really well in that game against Gross Point South. Yes, they're, they've had some good wins. I mean, Skyline's a really good win for them. Um, but when you look at West Bloomfield, you know, they don't play until, I think the ninth when they play Pontiac and Pontiac's been a complete, I still can't believe they only scored 11 points against them. Um, I mean, I, albeit it's a very good team that they played, um, but I still can't believe they scored 11 points um, total. And that's hard to figure out. Um, it's unheard of for a boys basketball team just to score just 11 points. I mean, but I have seen it happen. I mean, Waterford Kettering only scored seven points in a district final against Clarkston. I mean, that's how bad that was. That was a couple of years ago. Um, but when you really look at it, I mean, like West Bloomfield, I mean, they're playing good basketball. I really think they're going to be fine. I mean, I really think West Bloomfield will be fine. Um, so there's really no panic with them when I look at them. Um, Bloomfield Hills, um, I seen them play against Detroit Pershing. Looked really good. Noah Adtrick looked really good. Drew Wilson looked very good. DJ Jackson looked very good. Um, Wilson reminds me a little bit of DJ Lee. I mean, he really does. Um, you know, just with the, you know, with the characteristics of, you know what I mean? He's got a very good basketball IQ. Um, can shoot threes, dribble drive. Um, just really can score. I mean, find ways to score. I mean, like, that's how I view with 
with um Bloomfield Hills. I mean, obviously you got no Adam Chich. Um Amat Taylor's having a nice year. CJ Jackson's having a nice year. <laughs> Brandon Noellen did not play against um did not play against Detroit Pershing, but he did play against Detroit Henry Ford. Um he's had a nice year at baseball commit. Um but when I look at Bloomfield Hills, I mean when they played Detroit Henry Ford, I gotta give coach um Ken Flowers, the coach of Henry Ford, a lot of credit. I mean Switching up to a 2-3 zone, um, basically said that Noah Adamtrich said he could beat us by yourself. He had 22 to 36, um, which is not a good recipe. Um, they shut everybody else down, and I think that could be a um, a blueprint to shut Blue Bales down. I really do. If you play a very athletic 2-3 zone, uh, what the trainers for did um, in that game, and yes, they didn't shoot well. I mean, yes, Blue Hills didn't shoot very well, and I think that's a big concern for Coach Brian Canfield. But what helps them is they're going to be off for almost maybe two weeks. I mean, like, you know, they they don't play again until January 14th, and that is 11 days from now, what we're filming today. And when I look at that, that is a danger sign there. That's a concern for me. I think getting too much rest is a big concern because – when you look at when you look at players, you look at basketball players, they clearly want to play. I mean, they they want to get in the action, they want to play, you know, and sometimes that's the edge of the double edged sword. So with Bloomby Hills right now, I just think that when you really look at them, yes, Adam Chich is the real deal. I mean, Drew Wilson's an up and coming star. Um, CJ Jackson's a very reliable guard. Um, Ahmad Taylor's a reliable big, and Brendan Wellens a reliable big in the post. But when I look at the white right now, I still think Troy's the best team in this division because of the chemistry they have. Mason Parker's really, really um started to blossom into a star. Um, I really like Carter Cosmano. Um, very good. These good floor generals. Zach Pinoza's a solid defender. Can shoot you three if need be. Chase Kniper's a rebounder. Um, but. A lot to like with Troy. I mean, like, and then you have both Whiteside brothers, Darius and John. I mean, John come off the bench, Darius, you know what I mean? We know what he can do. I mean, I mean, like, he's been, like, the real deal. So when you look at the White right now, I mean, there's, it, I really think, and right now when I look at it, people want to say, well, the red is tough. Yes, North Farmington's there. You got him. You got Clarkston. You got Adams. You got Oak Park. I mean. And you got Ferndale. Ferndale, I really want to talk about next. And I think this is a team that, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, but I think the White right now stands out to be one of the, it should be one of the top 10 teams, top division in the state right now. Um, I know Goose Poops uh, um, did a basketball um, RPI list, I get RPI, and has the Red rank second behind the Catholic League Central, which I think should be the case. But I think the White should be in the top 10 as well. I mean, there's a lot of good competition in that division. Um, but let's go back to the Red. I mean, like, I really want to look at Ferndale because here is a team that I, I think with them is their problem, and the reason why they sit one and four is the schedule. I mean, you're playing a very tough conf non-conference week in, week out. You know, is it going to get – I mean, like, there's, like, two sides to the story. You're playing against tough competition. It's going to help you in the NPR. It's going to help you there. But when you have to play tough team after tough team after tough team, I mean, like, that's going to be a drag on you. That's going to be – that could be a problem. That's not – I mean, like, is it just strategic scheduling? I mean, when you're playing tough teams night in, night out, that's not easy. I mean, yes, are you getting ready for the postseason? Absolutely. I mean, when you look at Ferndale's district a couple weeks ago, it was gonna, it was difficult. But I haven't been impressed with Lincoln King Academy, though. I really haven't been. Um, and Ferndale University is going to be, I think, going to be a very tough team for Ferndale. I really do. Um, but Cameron Reed is the key for Ferndale's season. And the reason why I say this is because when I watched their game against Orchard Lake St. Mary's, I mean, Ferndale, I mean, they got Chris Williams played well. Um, I mean, like, they had, their bigs were solid in that game. But Cameron Reed is the key for Ferndale this season. I mean, he was averaging double figures 
until that game against St. Mary's where he was basically shut down. He was held to four points. And for Coach Juan Rickman, that's a concern. I mean, that is a big, big concern because of the fact that, you know, Ferndale, you know, they they like the dribble drop. Obviously, you know, they're going to be a much different team without Jason Drake and, um, you know, and, um, I mean, like, um, Travion Lewis. I mean, that's really, you know, it was going to be a different type of team, you know, but still the same pieces, except those two guys were still there. And you look at Ferndale, Ferndale, they have a ton of experience, obviously, getting to the Breslin Center the last two years, getting to the Final Four, but they ran into very good Grand Rapids Catholic Central teams. I mean, that's really where, you know, the concern is for the, you know, Eagles is, are they playing a too tough of a schedule? Because you look at, obviously, you're in the red division. You got, you know, you got Oak Park. You got Adams. You got West. I mean, like, you got Clarkston. I mean, you got Oak Park, Adams, Clarkston, um, North Farmington. I mean, like, that's not easy to do. I mean, like, that's not. And then you're playing against the next game you got is Muskegon. That's a difficult matchup. And you're going the west side of the state. That's not easy. Muskegon, we know what they've been doing. They've been playing really good basketball. And that's a difficult matchup. You still got to go to Ohio. I mean, that's not going to be easy. I mean, you got very difficult matchups. If you're Coach Juan Rickman, is it going to get you better? Yes, but you got to keep an eye on your team's morale. And I think that's the thing that I have a concern when you have teams that are playing very tough schedules is how is your team's mental psyche? That's the big concern I have with Coach Juan Rickman's team. Is, and he's going to say, oh, they're fine. I don't know if they're fine. I mean, I don't know if this team is fine or not. Because, yes, they're 1-4. and four. You played a tough schedule. But if I had to tell, my honesty, if I had to tell Coach Rickman right now, is eat up the schedule a little bit. Because these kids are, you know, it's not the same team that went to the Division II State semifinals the last two years. It's not the same team. It's a different team. So we'll see what happens. I mean, right now, Ferndale's playing a really tough schedule, really tough spot right now. They really are. Um, now let's go from the red to the blue. Um, I mean, like, well, we got some more red, obviously. Um, we got Adams, obviously, coming off a win against Detroit Country Day. Um, William G. Um, had a big night. They've been without Brady Priest scoring the last two games. I don't know why. Um, but Adams, they're going to be fine. Clarkston's the team that I, I got some concerns. I mean, there is some big concerns. I mean, John Call is out with a, um, with a thumb injury. Hand was in a, hand was in a cast. Um, obviously, um, Brandon Wiley has been on and off shooting wise. John, I mean, like Brody, Brady Cozen's the key for that team. I mean, if Cozen has... A big game. Clarkson usually wins. If he doesn't, they struggle. Against Utica Eisenhower, that was a perfect example. I mean, when Cozen goes off, they 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 have a they they win games. I mean, and then when and then Desmond Steppens had a nice game as well. I mean, but when you really look at it here, Clarkson's ability to get to the line, obviously, you know that. But I really think, you know, when you look at teams when you're playing against when team I can understand why teams don't want to play Clarkson I get it because you look at the foul discrepancy each game and you look at Clarkson's side maybe about one or two fouls and the other side you have about 10 team fouls on the other side so I can understand why teams don't want to play them I get it because you know I mean there is some questionable fishing is it like the Green Bay Packers with Aaron Rodgers I mean, you know, Aaron Rodgers will get the benefit of the doubt. I still think with Clarkston, there's some times that they do get benefit of the doubt. I mean, there are some times. And, you know, and I'm going to be, and, and that's not knacking on the players over at Clarkston, but I just feel like the aura is still there, you know. But we'll see. We will see. Um, but that's my take on Clarkston. I mean, they've been living on the edge. Finding ways to win games. They had that bad loss to Carmen Ainsworth. Um, 
but they've they've been managing to survive games close and you know the way they're playing right now i mean like there's some warning signs there with clarkson really is um then let's go we got north farmington um had their own showcase two blowout wins against um detroit western and toledo whitmer ryan hurst didn't play in the um in the um game against whitmer um now they get Grand Blank, and then they're off for another 11 days. And if you're, Nor and if you're Coach Todd Negotian, you're looking at that Farmington game and say, well, wait a minute here. You postponed against us. I mean, like, why not? We can use that to play to make up that, that day, you know, because, one, it will help farming. It will help North Farmington out big time because it has them a game, and they, they have that big gap ahead of them. So that could be an area where I think they could play. I mean, you know, between now, I mean, they got Grand Blank coming up. It's in Grand Blank. It's a tough trip for Negotian and his team. I know Negotian's not a big fan of having to travel. I would say north of M24. I mean, like, he's going to have to a Grand Blank. I mean, Grand Blank, we know, is a very good team. I mean, they, yes, they got RJ Taylor. Yes, they got, um, they got others as well. I mean, like, in, that's going to be a tough matchup for them going up there to Grand Blank. I mean, to play a very good Bobcats team. You know, a lot of people are going to be out there for that game. Um, so it'll be very interesting, interesting to see what happens there um, with North Farmington. So we'll see what happens there. Um, let's talk the blue. I mean, when you look at this division, um, you know, Oxford hasn't played because of the, with the break. Um, we, I've seen Stony Creek. I've seen Rochester. Um, I've seen um, Berkeley. I mean, like, you know, I've seen Seaholm. I mean, like, I've seen Royal Oak. Royal Oak's off to that start, but we're going to know a lot about them um, coming up. And I think, you know, it'll be curious to see what happens in that game against Lake Orion, um, which I think it'll be a good test for Royal Oak. I mean, going up against a team that is a defense-first team, I know Royal Oak shoots the three ball very well and very efficiently, but I'm curious to see how those rim, how they do on those, on those rims at Lake Orion. I mean, like, usually, you know what I mean? Like, usually when you have gyms where it's a good place to shoot, and then when you have gyms um, like Rochester's, always a good place to shoot. Um, but gyms like Lake Orion or Oxford or Clarkston, they can be very difficult to shoot at times. Um, but Royal Oak, I'm curious to see how, they, how they're going to play. I mean, Davis Arbiter has been playing well. Dylan Hoppins been playing well. Um, then you have um, you have Cam. I mean, like Cam. I mean, Cl Cam the Clark's been playing very well. Um, I mean, they got very really good players. There, Aaron Smith's done a really nice job with that team. You know, putting it together. And you know, for this moment, this could be a really interesting. Um, could they be a sleeper in the blue? I don't know, but I think they're gonna make it interesting. I mean, like. When you look at the division right now, it's 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 a mess because you look at obviously, I mean you know Oxford's been okay. I mean yes they haven't had um Jake Champagne. I expect him back, um real shortly. Um, then you look at Berkeley obviously with Tamir Runkovich. Yes they don't have their point guard right now. Um, but Runkovich has done a really nice job for Berkeley. Um, they had that tough loss at Dearborn. Um. Dearborn's a good team. They're a solid team. So I'm going to give Coach Joe Sermo's team the benefit of the doubt here and give him a pass there. But, you know, Runkovich has been playing outstanding basketball. Um, I could see Runkovich, you know, being maybe, you know, maybe maybe mid-major, maybe D2 level, D3 type player. I mean, like, I, he's that good of a player. I mean, I could see him definitely playing college basketball somewhere. I really do. Um... When, but Berkeley could be a player in this division. Seaholm's going to get a lot of their talent back um, coming up. Um, Troy Athens has been a weird team to figure out. I mean, Emmanuel Robinson's been playing really well. I mean, they had that rough loss at Little Caesars Arena to Okemos. Now, I got to give Okemos' staff a lot of credit for, you know, finding a way to play this game at Little Caesars Arena, um, giving Troy Athens that experience as well. I mean, like playing at Little Caesars Arena, it's a great experience for the high school, for for young kids. Really great experience to play playing on an NBA court. Um, you know, now I've got my own opinions about the Detroit Pistons, but I'm not going there. Um, but 
in all reality, um, I, I think when you look at the, um, when you really look at um, playing at Little Seas Arena, you know, it's a great experience. You get to go to the, you know, you're, you get to go to like the home locker rooms, the visitors locker rooms. Um, you get to see the Red Wings locker room, the Pistons locker room. Um, you know, just being up in the, up top on the bleachers, you know, seeing where, um, you know, seeing just the whole dynamic of Little Seas Arena is a really great experience. Now, the game, it wasn't great for Troy Athens. I mean, lost to a good Okemos team, but, you know, they, um, but they got to enjoy the experience at Little Seas Arena. Um, and then they played at St. Clair Community College against, um, against them. Lampier won that game by 20. Robson at 15. Um, and Crum at 12 for in that game. Um, good win for Coach Dave Scott to close out the year. Um, around 500, they've been playing that. Um, so I'm very curious to see where Troy Athens is um, going to be at going forward. But they could be a player for sure in this division. They could certainly be a player. And I think they could be. I mean, we'll see. I mean, I really like the direction where Athens is right now. Um, but can they be a player? Absolutely. Um, Rochester, you know, with them, obviously the injury bug has been bothering them. They were at the new Baltimore Anchor Bay Classic. Um, lost a tough one to Growth Point North. Obviously, they got um, Ariant the big. Um, they lost that one by 9, 54-45. And then they bounced back to beat new Baltimore Anchor Bay on um, 46-42. Um, <clears throat> Rochester, you know, you know, they should be healthy before the start of the year. They should be healthy by now. Um, I will be very curious to see where they're at. Um, with them. I mean, like, that's something to really, really watch for there with them. Um, they're going to be a player for sure. I just think Rochester, they're going to be a player, um, you know, in this division. And I think they could be, you know, we'll see what happens. But I really think they, they will be. Um, then there's Stony Creek. Um, you know, when I look at the Cougars, the record says 0-5. But I see a team that's making a, a ton of progress. I think they're better than their 0-5 record. Now, some coaching decisions I don't understand. Um, Jake Fulkerson has been a really good player, been really consistent for Stony Creek. Aiden Grosko has been solid for them at the four spot. Um, and then Peyton Rumber obviously has been hurt, but he's your best rebounder. But I just don't understand why Coach Jeff Owen doesn't start Trey Walker. Because Walker is your best point guard. He is your, he's a playmaker. I mean, he is, I mean, that whole team, that whole team, they have a ton of energy. They have a ton of, you know, they're, I mean, they work their tails off. You know, the problem for Owen is, it's tough, you know, changing a culture. You know what I mean? It's tough. You know, when this team had a really rough year last year. And when you look at that non-league schedule they got coming up, having to play the likes of Stevenson, then you have to play Macomb Dakota during the season. You still got to play Adams. You got to play Clarkston. Then you got Lake Orion on there. That's not easy for this team. That's not easy. That's not easy for Coach Jeff Owen. It's not going to be. But when you look at it here, it's, it'll certainly help in the NPR, obviously. When you play in those type teams. And he's got to play Burmy and Brother Rice. And that is, I'm going like, when I saw that, when I saw that game, I'm going like, why? Why? I mean, I understand the quote, Rick Flair, to be the best, you got to beat the best. And I understand that quote. You know, be the man, you got to beat the man. But for Stony, for, for Stony Creek, there is some signs that the program is going on the right track. You look at the sub varsities. I mean, they've installed the diamond press. You know what I mean? That is, Really been like, you know, really been key for the Sony Creek success in the um, sub varsity levels. I mean, now you're looking at, you know, and they're playing really tough, gritty man to man defense. I mean, I really like where this Stony Creek team is. I mean, like, you know, I think, you know, when you look at the blue right now, I still think, in my honest opinion, in this, in this division, I still think with the record they have, everything that's going against them right now. Um, yeah, people are going to say, well, what about Oxford? What about, um, Berkeley? 
I mean, but I. what about Rochester? I still think right now in this division, I think Stony Creek, when healthy, is the best team in this division. I think that, you know, they got the experience. Jake Fulkerson's a better player. Aiden Grosko's a better player. Trey Walker's a better player. Peyton Rumbler, you know, he can be a player as well. I mean, like, they got playmakers. I think for Stony Creek, the perfect example right now is the Detroit Lions. You know, they struggled off the get-go, one and six. They just need that one win that could turn everything around for them. And I think they can get it. Question's going to be when. And when they do, they're going to be a hard team to play against. I mean, this is, a, this is already a really tough team to play against right now with Stony Creek. They got a lot of they got a lot of proven players on that team. A lot of proven players. I mean, you know, a lot of experience. And right now, they're just going through a tough spot right now. It really is. But I still think, when healthy, Stony Creek is the best team in that division. Even over Rochester. Even over Oxford. Um, even over Royal Oak. I mean, even in, even in the rest of the division. I mean... I, I still think that. So, we'll see. Let's go now from boys to girls. Um, the girls' side of things, obviously, not a lot of postseason tournaments that they were, postseason ho- classics they were in. Um, Oak Park, they played Deckerville. Um, that game, um, Deckerville won that one, um, 39-21. At the St. Clair Community College Classic. Um when I look at this game, um, Oak Park, I, it's hard for me to figure them out because here's a team that put up 50 points against Detroit Martin Luther King. And then they haven't been the same since that game. I mean, they put up more 16, 20. They're still giving up a ton of points defensively. That's a problem. That's not good. If you're coaching Tell Corson, that's not good. You got to get that addressed. Um, when I look at the rest of the blue, um, Bloomfield Hills obviously is the best team in that division. Um, with the way that they're playing, I mean, they're, I mean, to me, I view Bloomfield Hills as a white team in the blue. That's how I view them. And, you know, they got Ruby Smith's been playing good. They've got Mikhail Proctor's playing well. Ashley Forner's been playing well. I mean, Coach Kristen Massey's done a really nice job with this program. She's even built the program strength back. That's a credit. That's a testament to her and her staff. They're going to be a tough out in the district. I mean, people are going to say, well, Birmingham and Marion, are they back? Obviously, got Mackenzie Swanson in their district. I mean, like, here's the thing I have Birmingham and Marion. Here's the, here's the key thing. You know, when you're doing a rebuild, you know, it's going to take time to rebuild. I mean, like, you know, you're going, you're going to have to go through a transition period. It's got to happen during the year. Um, but it looks like, you know, but I, I get some of these people, you know, at the Motor City Round Ball Classic. I know, like, um, um, Lindsey Guy on Twitter, I mean, like, hyping up players. Um, not a real big guy in that. I mean, I'm not, personally. But I just think when you look at teams. You know, right now, I think if there's a team that's dangerous right now, it's Bluebeal Hills. I mean, in the blue right now, it's Bluebeal Hills. Farmington, we know they've been up and down. Yasmin Thorpe's been a really good player for them. Um, Carissa Hankins um, been playing well. Um, Haven't played since the holidays. I mean, Coach Laura Guzman um, has done a nice job with that program. Um, Then Avondale, I think, is the third best team in that division um, with the way that they're playing. It's kind of a mess at the very bottom because you have Ferndale University, Ferndale, Pontiac, and um, Oak Park. I mean, all of those teams. You know, Ferndale University is going through a complete rebuild, um, which I didn't expect <coughs> because, you know, I didn't think that last year's team, they had a lot of senior experience, but this team is very, very young. You know, and I talked to... um some people within the Ferndale University program, you know, and like, you know, you know, they're struggling. I mean, like they're struggling and I get it. You know, you're going through a tough transition period. It's going to be tough. It really is. Um, 
I think that at the end of the day here, um, you're putting together your program, and I know it's a very it's a challenge for the Eagles um, right now. Um, Ferndale High, um, you know, they've been up and down. Um, Pontiac hasn't scored 10 points at all um, this season, which is mind-boggling. Um, and then we talked about Oak Park earlier. Um, so there are some question marks, but when I look at the blue right now, clearly to me is day. Um, Bloomfield Hills looks like they're the best team. Um, Farmington's, the, Farmington's definitely number two. Avondale's three. Um, when I look at the rest of the division, um, if I have to grade somebody right now, I would put Oak Park right now in there. Then it's Ferndale, then Ferndale U, and then Pontiac. Um, that's how I'm looking at the blue right now. Um, let's go down from the blue to the white. Um, when I look at the white and, you know, people are going to say, obviously, well, Oxford hasn't played since the holiday. North Farmington picked up a big, big win against Saginaw Arthur Hill in the Motor City round ball. Um, had to survive that game. Sal left for Penelope Query are both instrumental in those wins and that win for them against the Lumberjacks. Now, Saginaw Arthur Hill did not have a good Motor City round ball classic. I mean, with two losses to Macomb, Dakota, and North Farmington, that's not a good omen heading into the um, SVL, especially having to go against the likes of Midland, Midland Dow. Um, Bay City Western's been improving. Um, Bay City Central's there. Um, and then playing the likes of Grand Blank, Davison, Lapeer, um, you know, those are not going to be easy games. But albeit, you know, when you look at the Valley, um, <laughs> playing against your, you know, I think they've got them divided into two divisions. I mean, obviously the South, you know, it's a tougher road there. But the North, you still got Midland Dow there. But back to North Farmington, I think when you look at the Raiders right now, could this win get them over the hump? And... Pass Oxford? I, I don't know because they still got some concerns. Um, North Farmington and Oxford would be a really interesting matchup. I mean, even them and Royal Oak is an interesting matchup. I mean, Royal Oak's been playing really good basketball as well. I mean, like, obviously what the Ravens have. Um, you look at, obviously, with them, um, you know, with Royal Oak, I mean, like, I really like what Lucy Furtag's done. I really like what... um. You know, Nadia Dinkins is done. Um, um, Lydia Dinkins is done. I mean, like, I, I think Coach Brian Zapata has done a really nice job of that team. I mean, but with North Farmington, obviously with Leffler and Creary, um, Eliza Muller has been inconsistent, and I think that's a problem. Um, but when I still look at the white, I mean, and then you got Harper Woods. I mean, Harper Woods, new coach, and Anthony... Um, Anthony Brown taking over that team. Um, I really think that the Pioneers, and I saw them play against um, Detroit Mumford, and there were times of greatness for them. I mean, they, they've scored over 50 points in each game this season. That's really good. The problem is, for Harper Woods, is if Cecilia Peterson is not on the floor, they give up a, they give up points in bunches. I mean, that's what I noticed when I saw them in the... um. In the Detroit Public School League Holiday Classic, they were just absolutely tortured by Detroit Mumford defensively. This is not a good defensive team. They're a good offensive team because they can score in bunches and they have Cecilia Peterson in the paint. So if you're Harper Woods, you got a very tough road ahead of you in the tough white, you know, going against the likes. You still got to, you haven't played North Farmington yet. You haven't played Oxford yet. You've seen Royal Oak. I mean, you beat Troy Athens. But, I mean, Troy Athens, we know, is a much different team with Skylar Emerson's on the floor um, and, and scoring consistently. So, when you look at Harper Woods, I mean, like, everything flows, goes through Peterson. And that's really what I'm saying right now with Harper Woods is, you know, they've got, I mean, like, they've got to do better defensively. I mean, like, don't give me this. Don't give me this. Well, we play well against teams that are um, below our competition. Sure you do. But when you're playing against teams like, when you're playing against proven teams, and when you look at the teams in your district, 
You got Growth Point North in there. You got Growth Point South in there. You got Lakeview in there. That's a tough district for you. That is a very difficult district. And if you don't play defense in that district, you're not getting out of that district. That's what I would tell Harper Woods right now. They've got to play defense. And when you look at and you look at some games that I think that could be trap games, you look at games against Oxford, I think it's gonna be a problem there. I think North Farms is gonna be a problem there for them. And I think and I think also um Royal Oak will be a problem when they play him again. I mean, Harper Woods has gotta beat at least they gotta beat all three of those teams at least once. They gotta beat all three of them. But I don't see it. I don't I really don't see it. So that's my take on Harper Woods. North Farmington, they're fine. Um, Royal Oak, they're fine. Oxford, they're fine. Um, Troy Athens, if Emerson plays well, Troy Athens plays well. If she doesn't, they struggle. That's, the, that's what I've been getting with the trend with them. Seaholm has been struggling. Really struggling. So it be key for them to get out to a really good start for them going forward. Um, and then you have, um, Adams has been struggling. Um, they're young. I like Morgan McPherson a lot. I've looked at that team. They're just young. I mean, Joe Malberg's team, I mean, he's very, very young. I mean, that's the take I have with Adams. I mean, so that's my take on the white right now is, you know, when you look at the division right now, I still think Oxford's the top team in that division, followed by, um, Followed by North Farmington, then Royal Oak, then Harper Woods, then Seaholm, Troy Athens, Adams. Um, I, I'm not sure if I'm forgetting if I'm forgetting a team in there. Um, maybe, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. Um, but I, I think that. Um, but I still think right now Oxford's the best team in that division. Um, let's go to the red now. Um, West Bloomfield had that big win against, um, Chicago Kentwood Academy, um, down by 15, um, ride the Davis twins, came back, overtime game, 186-83, high scoring game, um, India Davis at 31, summer 28, um, competent win for coach from Daryl McAllister, um, the Hendrick sisters, we know what they're capable of. Destiny Washington playing really well. Ava Lord's been playing well. Um, bench is still, there's still some warning signs when I look at West Bluefield. I mean, the bench is a big concern for me with them. Um, but when you have to rely on the Davis sisters, the Hendrick sisters, you know, to win the games, I mean, like, there's a double-edged sword. What did they get in the foul trouble? I mean, that's the, that's the big concern I have with West Bluefield um, going forward. Even in showcase games where they, you know, they didn't look good against Arbor Prep or, um, South Bend, Indiana, Washington, Indiana. I mean, they didn't look very good in those games. But West Bloomfield right now, to me, they look like they're a team that's gaining a ton of confidence. They're a team that's really gaining a lot of confidence. And that's a good sign for them and a really tough sign for the rest of the league going forward. And maybe the rest of the state. I mean, like, if West Bloomfield can play what they're capable of playing, there's a great chance they could repeat as state champions. There is a very good chance they could repeat. Um, and then you got you got Clarkston, who also played in the um round ball class against Grand Blank. Um, Ellie Roback came back, played in that one, had eight points and eight rebounds. It was a 31-26 Grand Blank win over Clarkston. Now, interesting seeing on Twitter that Aaron Goodnow, the coach Clarkston, um wrote that his team was really close. Now, defensively, this team is very good. There's no doubt that this team is very good defensively. Offensively, there's some concerns. And he's still got a very tough schedule ahead of him. I mean, beside the rest of the red, he's still got to play, you know, and he got West Bluefield coming up. He's still got Oxford coming up at Little Seas Arena. Um, it's going to be tough for Clarkson. I mean... Ava Hernandez is a solid player. Kira Tomey's, Kira Tomey's hat has looked good at times. I mean, like, you know, Mir Zorsky's looked good at times. I mean, like, Claire Walker's been really good. I mean, like, you look at this team. I mean, like, for good enough to say they're close, I mean, I don't know what the definition is, is of that. I mean, yes, the schedule is difficult, 
Yes, they're very strong defensively. They're very good defensively. But, you know, with, with the rollback back, I, I know she adds three-point shooting. She's a very good shooter. Um, can dribble drive. More than capable of taking over a game by herself. People, are, I haven't heard the comparisons yet to Maddie Thrusky, um with rollback. Um, I think people, I, I, I'm not going there with describing putting um, rollback with likes of Kaya Lukenbach, the likes of, or the likes of um, even Manny Thrusky last year. Thrusky was a special player. Don't get me wrong. She was a very special player. But I think rollback's got a long way to go to get to that, um, to get to um, those levels, you know, uh, the Lukenbachs and the Thruskys. You know, I think she's got a long way to go. I mean, she's only a freshman. I mean, like, but I know people have already started hyping her up already. I mean, like, I mean, like, I need to see how she does against, you know, teams that are going to really focus on her. Like, like, um, like a West Bloomfield or Lake Orion or a Rochester or Stony Creek. I mean, those teams that are really, really well prepared teams. I mean, we'll see. I mean, like, but rollbacks off to a nice start. I mean, yes, she got hurt against Macomb, Dakota, came back against Grand Blank, um, but I can't trust Grand Blank right now. I really don't. I mean, like, I'm not being mean to Grand Blank and all that. I mean, yes, they got some good players. I mean, Jana McCray, Chelsea Bishop. I think they're going to have problems with Oxford in their district. Um, I don't think Davidson's that good. I don't think Lapeer's that good this year. Um, but... I will be very curious to see how Clarkson does in the league um, and going against teams that, um, you know, that are going to really have players that can really guard rollback. And we'll see what happens. Um, Lake Orion, when you look at the Dragons, um, you know, not much to say about them. I mean, like, not much to say about Lake Orion. I mean, they're they're clicking on all cylinders right now. Um, Coach Bob Bridges done a really nice job of that team. Not much to say about Lake Orion. Um, Stony Creek, you know, getting up, not much to say about Stony Creek either. I mean, like, you know, I mean, like good win for them in the holiday. Um, a good win for them. Um, and going on the break, um, obviously the big three with, um, Emily Flynn, um, Sarah LaPrairie and uh, Mia Carson. I like to play, uh, Merrick Schlaubach. I really like the play. She's been playing in also Lily Solik. Um, I think that Kelsh Kellen James is a really nice team going forward. Depth of a little concern for me with them. Um, Rochester, you know, they're off to a nice start right now. Obviously, Alice Max has been the um, key for them. I need to see more from Kylie Robinson. Um, Natalie Race has been really clutch in game situations. Um, very instrumental in their game against Lake Orion and Macomb, Dakota. Um, but we'll see with her. I mean, like, Rochester's got a really interesting, um, but they don't play it again until the ninth. And, you know, that's a little bit of a concern for me when I look at Rochester. Too much rest could be a bad thing. I mean, it really could be. Um, Southfield Arts and Tech, um, we know what they have. Um, obviously, you know, I mean, like, they've been struggling a little bit but on and off. I mean, there's games where they look really good offensively, and then there's games that, you know, go like, what are you doing? I mean, they haven't been consistent. We'll see what happens with them going forward there. Um, Troy, we know they're young, um, very young. Um, we'll see what happens to them. Um, Groves, when you look at them, uh, Caitlin Sanders, um, Sierra Rocco, um, Cameron Little's been playing well for Coach Allison Heidi. I will be very curious to see how Groves does, um, heading into the new year. I mean, when you look at the red right now, obviously West Bloomfield, Got Rochester, Lake Orion, um, Clarkston, Stony Creek, Groves. Um, then it's Troy. Then South. I mean, then Southfield and Troy right now. That's how I would look at it right now. But I would flip Troy and Southfield. We'll see. Um, very curious to see how this division is going to look going forward. Um, we're going to see what happens. Um, definitely in the ranks of the girls basketball. Obviously. Um, you know, heading into the new year. Um, let's now talk about a little bit, of course, the, um, I do want to,
talk a little bit about what's been going on at um, Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Of course, o Orchard Lake St. Mary's is not a member of the OA, but it does impact some teams that are in districts. Um, when you look at their district with Birmingham Brother Rice, yeah, Bloomfield Hills in there, Grove, Seahome. Um, apparently, you know, what's been going on with them has been the, um, they've had a case of, of, you know, they've, they've had a court case. We've, um, it's been in the Detroit news. Um, you know, Scott Bernstein's done a really nice job talking about it as well. Um, they had two players that, that came in from different schools. Um, um, Jane Savory transferred in from Detroit Renaissance and Isaiah Hines from Macomb, Dakota. Um, they, they, uh, had to deal with the case with the Catholic league, of course, you know, they went to federal court surrounding their eligibility and, you know, and they ended up winning a case against the Catholic league, um, played in a couple games, um, and then had to play, had to miss their, um, and then the MHA stepped in and said, you can't play these guys. Because the because we don't deem me as a boarding school, and and they subject them to the transfer rule, which in the transfer rule means that if you're going there for athletic reasons, you got to sit out a year. So it's a mess. I mean, like it is a big, big mess. And the reason why this does impact OA teams, obviously Orchard Lake St. Mary's in that Bloomfield Hills district. Um, obviously, yes. They, Orchard Lake St. Mary's got two got two really good players, um, and some at Barnes and um, Trey McKinney. Obviously, Trey McKinney, um, we know what he's done, but you know now you got a question. Of course, you know it does. This does open up a debate. Topic is, you know, I mean, like with boarding schools, and is Orchard Lake St. Mary's a boarding school? I mean, that is a big question. That is going to be a question that you know likely will come up. I mean. So when you really look at, you know, this case here, I mean, like, I just think that there's a lot of similarities to the Thomas Gittier case. A lot of you, I don't know if a lot of you remember that case. I mean, obviously, Gittier transferred from Macomb, Dakota to Clarkston to play a senior year, moved into a residence in Clarkston, um, but wasn't able to play because of athletic, because of, um, they said that the transfer was athletic reasons. Um, the MHA is what I'm thinking here is they're saying is, well, we don't deem you as a boarding school. You guys are subject to the transfer rule, which means that in your transfer looked like they were athletically motivated. That's what I'm assuming the MHA is, is saying in this case. I mean, like, that's what they're saying. I mean, like, but it's, it's a complete mess. I mean, like when you really look at it, I mean, like. You know, and I can just imagine how those players are feeling. I mean, like, it is a very, very difficult um, situation for them. I mean, yes, you're sophomores. I mean, yes, that, you know, I mean, like, you're sophomores and, you know, and be sit out the whole year, you know, you wait until you get back into it and play the next year. I mean, like, now in Kithier's case, he was a senior, you know what I mean? And wanted to play a senior year at Clarkston. And, <laughs> Wasn't able to do it. Um, but with, with Savory and, and Hines' case, I think, you know, that, you know, that, um, you know, I mean, like, if, I don't know how this is going to play out. I mean, like, I just don't know how it's going to play out. Because, because there's a lot of legal ramifications in this. Um, but it's something to really keep an eye on. Um, if you're in that district, if you're like Bloomfield Hills, West Bloomfield, Groves, and Seahome, um, you're definitely keeping an eye on this case because, because this could impact you come postseason time. You know, if you have to play Orchard Lake St. Mary's, um, that, you know, that, you know, will they be back or not? That's the, that's the question that I would say those four schools is keeping an eye on that court case with Orchard Lake St. Mary's, um, but, you know, there's a lot of ramifications, you know what I mean, that could happen. Um, you know, so I will be very curious to keep an eye on with this case. I mean, really am curious to see what happens. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, 
So we'll see what happens, obviously, when you look at the basketball world, obviously, um, heading into the new year. Um, when you talk, um, when you when you look at teams that I think could be in for a big time, big role in the new year, obviously, when you look at the red division, when you look at the red, obviously, and boys, North Farmington is a team to really watch for. But Ferndale, I think, is the wild card in this one to watch. The white, obviously, Troy. You got Bloomby Hills. You got Groves. Um, West Bloomfield, um, Lake Orient's a team to really watch for in that division, um, because we don't know what type of dragon team's gonna, gonna show up, I mean, we just don't know what type of team, Farmington's the same boat, I mean, like, yes, they're coming off that flu outbreak, they didn't look good against River Rouge, but we'll see what happens there, I mean, the blue, I mean, the blue is gonna be really interesting to see, obviously, Stony Creek, I still think it's the team in that division, but Rochester will have a huge say. Oxford will have a huge say. Um, and then the gold division. I mean, Berkeley have a say in that division as well. Troy Athens, Wild Carter. And then the gold division, you got, I still think Harper Woods is the best team in that division. Um, I, I can't trust Southfield. Um, Avondale. Um, Avondale, I can trust. Fernand University, I can trust. Pontiac, I really can't trust right now. Um <laughs> So we'll see what happens on the boys' side of things. And the girls' side, um, West Bloomfield, obviously, team to beat in the red. You still got Rochester, Lake Orion, um, Clarkson, Stony Creek. Um, could be big-time players. And Groves could be a sleeper as well. Um, I mean, like, and then in the um, white, um, in the white, you got um, Oxford, I still think, is favored there. Then you have North Farmington. Um, then you have um, Royal Oak, Harper Woods. Um, Harper Woods, it's hard for me to trust them right now with the way they play defense. Um, Seaholmes is a wild card team there. Uh, the team I forgot to mention was Berkeley. Of course, Berkeley, you know, Berkeley to me, it, they're struggling a little bit because of the, um, you know, obviously the injuries there. But Berkeley's a team that I really think if they can get everybody back healthy and everybody on the same page, um, I think they could turn things around real quick. So, but we'll see. I mean, like, but right now it's not a good situation over there at Berkeley right now. Um, really looking at what I'm hearing. Um, and then the blue division, um, Bloopia Hills, obviously a team to beat there, followed by, um, Avon, followed by, um, you know, I, Avondale, Farmington are, are your next two tier teams. And then, I would say Oak Park, Ferndale, Ferndale University, and um, Pontiac. So we'll see what happens um, heading into the new year. Um, but we'll see what happens um, going forward. Obviously, final thoughts, obviously, heading into the season, heading into the new year. A lot to look forward to. I know um, cheerleading competitions are coming up. Hockey's been well underway. Um we're going to see what happens. I mean, like, we're going to be in line for a really fun, fun winter. I mean, like, um, so we'll see what happens going forward here, and we'll see what happens going forward. All right, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OA. Um, keep an eye on the football coaching situations over at Royal Oak and Pontiac. Um, it looks like um, I have, according to a source I've been hearing, but I can't confirm that Royal Oak might have their new coach. If they do, we'll... We'll talk about it next week on the podcast. Um, Pontiac, we don't know the coaching situation there yet. So we'll see what happens going forward. Um, but a lot to talk about going forward, heading in the OA season. Um, still got spring sports to talk about as well. So we'll see what happens going there. All right, I'm going to sign off here. Take care. Happy New Year to everybody. God bless. And I will see you all next week, everybody. Take care. And I will see you all next week. See you. And God bless everybody.